Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching and thanks to our producer, as always, Jeff Durall. Also, with the help of Jordan Schaefer, who is also a part of our crew today at the President's House as yeah. we celebrate Christmas with Fort Hayes State University President Dr. Mirta Martin. Hello and welcome to the University House. <laughs> Thank you for asking us. <laughs> Just so you know, Jeff and I have been instructed not to touch anything. <laughs> That's right. You can, you can look, but you may not touch. May not That's touch. Right. And our liability insurance, so far as I know, is paid up. So good. I think I'm we're glad in good to hear shape. that, Jeff. <laughs> so I'm not worried about you. I'm only worried about Jeff. Oh, I know. I worry about Jeff on a regular All the time. basis. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's start with the, the university house, if you mm -hmm. will, and how welcoming you make it at Christmas. Well, thank you. It's, you know, it's, um, it really, as you know, I feel very strongly that I have the privilege to sleep here, which is about all I do. Um, but this house and its memories belong to the university, to the community. And so uh, since my arrival, we've been opening the house to the university community, to our community at large. Um, we had the house opened for Art Walk, for the Fosfrest uh, last Friday, um, to highlight all the beautiful, talented uh, art that we have here by our artists, by the art of the foundation, etc. Um, the house has undergone several renovations uh, throughout the years, and um, um, the latest, of course, when I arrived. Mm -hmm. um, and primarily, we changed the colorings of the house to the pastel. I'm a pastel color. My furniture is, is light and teal and small, so it, it kind of fits in it. And what we've done is we've made this truly the uh, university home. We open it up to faculty. We have um, weekly gatherings here for s staff, for students. Normally we bring in two or three times a week we have students here. And, you know, that's wonderful because of two reasons. One, it creates a memory for that student, for that faculty, for that staff as part of a belonging. And this is part of their memory. But just as important, and actually more important for me, is the fact that if they come, or when they come, then I get to see them, and I get to spend time with them, and I get to visit with them one-on-one, -on -one, and that's just as important for me. So, you know, the Christmas decoration has, um, for the past couple of years, the community has been very generous, and they come in, and they decorate the house under the guidance of charm Arthur, who's a professor of interior design here at Fort Hayes, and who really did much of the decor of the house. Um, and so we have um, the trees are from Everlasting Impressions in the dining room, and the family room, actually it would be the living room. Mm -hmm. And then the greenery throughout the house and the flowers come from uh, Flowers by Francis. Uh -huh. uh, so we're able to showcase that which belongs to the community. Um, the the um, draperies in the dining hall were handmade and hand stitched by Jason. Um, and those are very, very special as well. So again, we highlight everything that makes us a family. And a lot of that we'll highlight as we take a little bit of a tour here, thanks to uh, uh, Jeff and uh, uh, the uh, expertise that uh, he and Jordan will bring to showing us as we talk about it today. So we begin in the living room. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some striking things in the living room. There are, um, again, primarily the work of our very talented faculty. I think the, the first thing that you see, the first centerpiece that you see is Lee Power's artwork. Um, I remember, and that's a special piece, when I was a candidate mm -hmm. here, I visited the, the, um, the house. And I remember looking into the living room, of course, um, and, and at the end of it was this piece by Lee Powers. And I remember thinking, what a beautiful mosaic. And then as I approached it, I realized that it was painting, small strokes that created this masterpiece. And I thought, yeah, has a lot of patience, because I would have gone one, two, okay, that's enough. Um, um, so that's a very, very wonderful memory and a, and a wonderful piece of art. Uh, we of course have the Christmas tree that is by 
everlasting impressions and it's beautiful with its white and its greenery. Um, it's, it's very, very special. The, the, um, we also have displayed a piece of John Thorne's. Of mm -hmm. course, you know, he was a professor here. Um, tremendous influence on the art program. And immediately recognizable too as Absolutely. John Thorne's work. I Absolutely. Think. Yeah. And, and that is dear near to my heart. I had the privilege to meet John Thorne's before he passed. Mm -hmm. and, and so that brings a special memory to my heart. And then of course the great big vase, uh, it's called Climbing Rose and it's the artwork of one of our students, Joel Brown. And uh, that's very special. That was the very first piece of artwork from a student that I bought and I thought it was very reflective of the talent that embraces this university. So, um, you know, that room is, is a more formal room, but again, it, it's filled with the intellect, with the ability, with the love, with the passion of our faculty. If you notice, most of the books uh, on the shelves are have been written by the faculty of Fort Hay State University. and. I keep prying then to keep me more and more books because I want to have every single book in there mm -hmm. written by our faculty and that's certainly very possible. Uh, this is the university house. It's the house to showcase mm -hmm. all that makes us distinctive and our faculty, our staff, our students make us distinctive and so that living room is the beginning of the journey mm -hmm. as to why Fort Hayes is the destination of choice. And in the dining room uh, you also have Linda Ganstrom's work uh, in yes. the dishes. Also work uh, in the centerpiece. Uh, the, uh, the From Charm Arthur, who uh -huh. did it by hand. It's uh, Irish lace, and it take, I think she said it took her 18 months to put mm -hmm. it together. Mm -hmm. um, the silverware is from our, art, our, our English professor, Dr. Michael Mead, and he has been very, very generous to um, donate a lot of things to the university. These pieces are on loan from him, the candelabra and the silverware that are phenomenal <coughs> pieces of silver. And then of course in the middle we have my grandmother's Capa di Monte centerpiece that comes in and out uh, when uh, we have guests. Surrounding the living room, or rather the dining room, is primarily art mm -hmm. from Fort Hayes University's foundation. They've been donated uh, through the generosity of individuals who want to share with us their treasure. And so we display them at the University House and we'll swap them out from time to time. So again, we can display that art. And that centerpiece uh, in, on the, uh, the large table from your yeah. grandmother. From my grandmother, yes. That was, um, uh, that's a, a reminder that she's always with me. Yeah. You know, so that's very, very special. As is the painting and the fans on the wall. I share with you that um, that uh, painting is my grandmother's grandmother. Uh -huh. It was painted in 1809 in Paris. Mm -hmm. And the story goes that she and there were Spaniards and she and her husband supposedly went to Mexico under Maximilian mm -hmm. and he became governor of the peninsula of Yucatan mm -hmm. and um, actually built, he was an architect. Mm -hmm. And so he built the city of Merida, which means city of white in Maya. And um, the legend goes that the fans were given to her mm -hmm. by Maximilian. So that's again piece of heritage, piece of belonging, piece of what makes his house unique. And there's also in the curial cabinet there the yard row yes. uh, yeah. figurines which yeah. are very special too. They are. Uh, I love angels. I um, always pray that I'm surrounded by them and and I am. All of the people around Fort Hayes are, are angels. There's uh, one that stands out. But one that stands out and was given by my children. It's a small little angel and mm -hmm. it's holding the world in his hands. And the piece is actually called New Beginnings, which is what I speak about all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. New Beginnings. Uh, moving to our location now, this is the family room? The is family right? room, uh -huh. yes. And again, it's filled with memories of of um, our faculty and our staff and, and personal memories. The, the figure behind us is um, made by um, Linda Ganstrom. Uh, that's a special figure. Linda has been designing and sculpturing women of power. Mm. And my great-great-great-grandmother to the nth power, uh, her name was Juliana. She was Queen Isabella's first cousin. 
So she called her Bella, short for Isabella, uh -huh. and took pictures of my daughter and of my family and of the ancestry, and this is what she put together. Um, I wish that she were here to explain it better, but again, when we were talking about our new beginnings, she envisioned new beginnings in the form of butterflies in the sense that they're cocoons mm -hmm. and they, they have rebirth and mm -hmm. they are new and they're filled with color and, and excitement and energy, but they're new. Uh -huh. And so the skirt in her, in Bella's, uh, is all decorated mm -hmm. with, um, with butterflies mm -hmm. to signify our new beginnings. The cross behind me is the artwork. I was going to ask you about the cross above the fireplace. Yes, it's the artwork of Toby Flores, mm -hmm. and that's very, very special artwork. He designed it, of course, for the University House, and much of the work around here, again, belongs <coughs> to the university's mm -hmm. faculty. Mm -hmm. uh, behind us are my precious moments. I think I have every single um, nativity precious moment ever done on the face of the earth, but that's that's also special because those were things that I collected mm -hmm. year after year. Uh, the pictures of my grandmothers, mm -hmm. uh, the one that I left Cuba, uh, my maternal grandmother and my paternal grandmother, who's the one mm -hmm. who lived to be 101. Uh -huh. And of course, pictures of my children, mm -hmm. um, surrounded by memory, surrounded Brilliant by, pictures. yes, Absolutely. it's, um, this is what makes a house a home, uh -huh. the people. and. These people, these, these reminders of our faculty, mm -hmm. of my family, um, this makes this a home. When did you start the Precious Memories Collection? Do you remember? Oh, gosh. It um, was when my husband and I got married. I think he gave me the very, actually, it's probably before we got married. So it would have been in <coughs> about 1979 was probably, I think, the very first piece of uh, Precious Moments, which is the mm -hmm. nativity set. Mm -hmm. And then every year after Ah. Um, he purchased one. Um, in the sunroom is also the collection that he gave us. They're Yadro Bells. They're commemorative ah. Yadro Bells. Mm -hmm. And so he bought me the very first one. I believe it was in 1979. And so I have, what, about 35 years worth of Yadro Bells. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's easy, you know. Um, I, he always says, I know exactly what to get her. So it's like, and every year I act surprised. I wonder what he got me for Christmas. <gasps> oh, look, a Yadro Bell. Uh, the newest one. Uh, yes, indeed. Speaking of, uh, John, a wedding gift that was in the uh, entryway there. Yes, a 30th the year. The hand-painted anniversary gift. Yes, it was. It's, um, it's a chest that he, um, it's an antique, um, but it's hand-painted. And it was for our 30th wedding anniversary. 30th wedding anniversary. 30th wedding anniversary. 30th wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and moved it over here. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering what he's going to get for the 35th. He only has another year to go. That's right. It's so. it's coming in a hurry. <coughs> uh, of course, the sunroom there. But yes. uh, also, we wanted to point out, if we could, uh, Dr. Martin, about uh, the Hall of Presidents. The Hall of Presidents. So um, on the first floor, of course, this is considered the public part of the house as is the basement and then the second floor is the private part of the house. But we went ahead and decorated, I call it the Halls of President. And it has all of the presidents that have lived in the house, beginning with Dr. Cunningham in the 50s, mm -hmm. then followed by Dr. Gustad, followed by Dr. Tomanic, followed by Dr. Hammond, and then followed by my family. Mm -hmm. So that's the Hall of Presidents uh, um, for the past 50 years. This is a somewhat uh, uh, situation where there is so much more to the president's house than appears from the outside, I think. Yes. And we'll be talking with uh, President Martin about some of the other areas for the Christmas holiday season in our community connection. Stay with us. Thank you. Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare-certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. And the angel care nurse come to see me once a week. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. Angel Care has helped uh, to stay home. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients. 
Welcome back to our community connection from the president's house, actually the university's house, I suppose mm -hmm. we should say, with President Mirta Martin from Fort Hayes State University for the Christmas season, our community connection. So within the house, how much is the influence of President Martin uh, versus uh, the decorator who comes in or uh, some of the things that were here? Well, there's um, what was here was the beautiful woodwork. <laughs> Um, pretty much, we almost came very close to almost gutting the house. Starting uh, to from honor scratch. From scratch. Not structurally necessarily, mm -hmm. but um, just in the way it feels. The, the house was mm -hmm. beautifully decorated in the browns and the taupe, but I'm not a brown and taupe person, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so we came in and we painted it in the pastels and filled it with uh, artwork from, as I said, from our faculty and our mm -hmm. staff. It's important to me to be reminded of mm -hmm. why we are here, and that's uh, the intellect of our faculty bring our students here, and mm -hmm. the caring and dedicated nature of our staff keep them here, uh, along with our faculty. So that surrounds it. You know, it has a lot of pictures. It has a lot of memories mm -hmm. um, from the pieces of uh, Yadro that we discussed that remind mm -hmm. me of family from the um, the, uh, dolls on the screen so they are some of them belong to my grandmother and some of them again uh, John gave me year after year mm -hmm. the coloring uh, I I changed um, light color I like lots of light mm -hmm. and you know the pastels whether it's pink or whether it's it's teal or whether it's vanilla uh, whether it's peach it just opens up a place uh, we brought in a lot of light as well, um, changed the bulbs again to open the house up. And, um, and then everything around it, we made it uh, more manageable. The pieces, as you can see, are smaller. So actually when we have gatherings here, we'll put <coughs> uh, tables here so everybody can sit. This becomes a great big dining room. Ah, mm -hmm. And they are able to sit here. Um, the, the, the rugs, the, the piano is a 1930s piano that belonged to the university. Oh. Um, again, it's just the softness to the house. I want this house to be a home, mm -hmm. to be a home for people uh, to feel comfortable. And so, you know, some of the personal <coughs> things I've brought in are, are memories. Mm -hmm. And then we're making memories each and every day here. And we're reflecting on not only the personality of President Martin, but also the opportunity for those of us to see the remarkable creations of the authors, the artists at Fort Hayes State University Absolutely. who have direct contact with uh, the Fort Hayes State students on a daily basis. Absolutely. And, you know, when we open the house also for uh, fundraising activities, you know that we have launched... Uh, the largest, most aggressive capital campaign in the history of Fort Hayes. So we're going out and, and donors are coming in. And it's so simple to say to a donor, don't you want to invest in this? Don't you want to invest in that? Um, and, and that's really important. So we bring them here, we showcase our talent, and um, we showcase the fact that at Fort Hayes State University, we're really a family and this is our home. It's not bricks and mortars. Um, those are just buildings, foundation. It's the people mm -hmm. that make it a family. It's the people that make it a home. And this is, um, and this university house is a home. And this university house also serves a, another purpose uh, in a way of recruiting, yes. if you will. Well, you know, it's a great big place. <clears throat> and um, I get to come here to sleep. That's about it. <laughs> she has a sitting room, by the way, where she has never sat. That's right. Because she doesn't have no, time or, to or sit. Or the TV, but one of these, that'll be my New Year's <laughs> resolution, to sit on that couch and to, to turn on that TV just at least once. Just to see once, if you can. Just to see yeah. if I can. <laughs> okay. Um, but you know, it's a great big house, and really, if it's going to be a university <clears throat> house, we used to use it, and we should be able to use it for university's benefit. And so when we're trying to attract faculty or staff or administrators to the university, sometimes there's a, either not the entire family can move together, or perhaps even if they can, they don't know what part of town they may want to purchase a home. You know, I mean, you want to live around the places that your friends live, mm -hmm. that your faculty friends live, your administrators live, and you need to understand 
the culture of the city. And so what we've done is we opened the university house and we've got um, in the basement, we've got a, a total apartment mm -hmm. with a sitting room and a full operational kitchen and bathroom and, and laundry room and bedroom mm -hmm. with its own private entrance. So families can live down there for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. When they purchase mm -hmm. their homes, they move out. On the first floor, we have also a, a suite mm -hmm. that has its own private entrance, as you saw. We can use it as a suite as well. And then the upstairs bedroom, even though it's supposed to be the private, yeah. I'm never there, so <laughs> might as well be used to attract people. So we, we, mm -hmm. let, um, we have actually had even a student's family mm -hmm. uh, stay up there. We had, at the beginning of the academic year, we were able to attract our very first students from the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. mother from the Bahamas brought the student here, and she had nowhere to stay. So she stayed up there for the week, mm -hmm. and that's what it should be about. And, mm -hmm. you know, we rotated kind of a bed and breakfast, so to speak. <laughs> they come in, they stay for a month, they stay for six weeks, they stay for a couple of months, and then the next set come in. And once in a while, they might actually see the president coming and going. Once in a going. while, they might actually see the president <laughs> coming and going. If except. you look in a hurry. Tell me about some childhood Christmas memories for Myrta Martin? Um, you know, there were many. I think uh, <clears throat> growing up in Spain, um, Christmas in Spain is quite different than it is in the United States. First of all, because I was living in a convent, <laughs> um, but also just the nature of Christmas itself. You know, in Spain you don't have Santa Claus. Well, you didn't. You, you do now, but, but really it's not the big holiday of the year. Mm -hmm. The presents are not brought to the children by Santa Claus. They're brought to the children by the three wise magi, wise mm -hmm. kings. And so Christmas is, the 10 days of Christmas is from the 25th to the 6th of January, which is Epiphany or mm -hmm. the day of the three wise men. Mm -hmm. And so the memories <coughs> are growing up are um, <coughs> being part of, of the celebration of family, that is Christmas. Uh, it's the, the parades with the, the wise men in camel, uh, on camelback. It's the beginning of the season where all you do for 10 days is you go from house to house to house to house to visit family and to eat and you eat and you house and you stop and you go and you and it's not about presence mm -hmm. it's about family and so on January the 6th the children get their three presents Christ got three presents from the wise men and so the children get three presents from the wise men and yes obviously you know when they go to the grandparents the grandparents have some and their uncles on their own but there's three and so the emphasis is on the season. The emphasis is on family. The emphasis is on togetherness, on being thankful. Um, and that's a memory that I actually brought with me to the States. Obviously, John is American, as it are my children. And yes, Santa Claus did come to our house. <laughs> um, but the three Magis also came to the house. Mm -hmm. And even to this day, on the 6th, they get three little things. Um, to remind them that our Savior received three gifts and only three, and the Christmas season is not about the gift, but it's about the family. Um, and, and those are the, the memories I have. They, uh, of course, growing up here, we have um, on the 24th, it's the beginning of the Christmas season, and that's something that we still celebrate. Um, it's called Noche Buena, which means Good Eve. It's a little translation. And so we gathered together, and my kids, when they were growing up, called it the Yuhu Feast, <laughs> <laughs> like the Grinch is called Christmas, because the, the table is set up with both the American dishes, you know, the turkey and the ham and the green beans and the mashed potatoes and the stuffing but it's also set together with the Spanish dishes. So you have the roast pork with garlic and you've got the black beans and the rice and you have the yuca and you have the fried plantains and it's laid out. And people just gather around, say grace, and then we just talk on. And that's the beginning 
of the Christmas season at our house. And, you know, that's why I've said to my children, when you all get married, um, your in-laws can have you for Thanksgiving, for Easter, for New Year's, for everything, <laughs> but you're mine for Christmas Eve. Uh -huh. And so that, that's very special, and we all come together uh, to begin mm. the celebration of the season and to remind us of the importance of family and of love. And every year we, play, we pray for peace, and that's our prayer for this year as well. If we could, uh, President Martin, <clears throat> in a little business here before yes. we actually conclude our uh, visit here at the President's House. Since we last visited, the Regents have approved the fifth college yes. at Fort Hayes State University. And we are so thankful to them um, uh, for their wisdom <clears throat> to allow us to, to have a fifth college. This is something that the faculty suggested almost six months ago that has been led by the faculty. And our fifth college uh, brings together uh, disciplines that are interdisciplinary in nature. So our fifth college is a college of science, technology, and mathematics. Um, it'll make us distinctive. It'll attract our students, and we'll be able to market it. You know, this is um, a season of miracles, and, and so I always say I believe in miracles. So we had the fifth college approved. Um, our boys' football team um, made it to their first bowl in the history, and I am so very mm -hmm. proud of them. Um, the score does not reflect the fact that they are champions. All of our student athletes are champions, and, and the boys' uh, football team under the leadership of Chris Brown and, and his coaches uh, did a phenomenal job. They, they made me proud and make me proud each and every day. Of course, our soccer team um, mm -hmm. also made it almost to the very end. That was a uh, a sad way to finish a, an extremely successful season and sudden death. But again, regardless of whether we win or lose, all of our, our students are champions. And of course, our girls are rated number one in the history of the program. So, um, you know, new beginnings at Fort Hay State University filled with miracles, but accentuating the fact that it's our people of excellence and our programs of distinction that make Fort Hayes a home and that make Fort Hayes State University the destination of choice. And I am so proud of our students, student athletes, but students throughout of our faculty and our staff who make this bricks and mortar and turn it into a home. Well, thank you for inviting us to the university house. Thank you. President Martin, we'll give you an opportunity here in our final moment to uh, send holiday greetings, Christmas wishes, to your family mm -hmm. through us Thank here you. at uh, Community Connection. Thank you. Well, my family is the family of Fort Hayes State University, <coughs> is the family of Hayes America, is the family of our students that come throughout the United States and the world that make Fort Hayes State University their home. And so to you today, I wish a very Merry Christmas and wonderful happy and holidays. I wish you all that is great about the Christmas season, and I wish a year filled with health, with happiness, and most importantly, with much peace. So thank you for affording me the opportunity to be part of this incredible home, of this incredible place, of your incredible community. Thank you for making me a part of the family of Fort Hay State University. Thank you. President Myrta Martin, our community connection.